The Grand Hotel in Scarborough has been opened since 1867. It's a beautiful and enormous hotel that overlooks the North Yorkshire town's South Bay. It was, in its early days, the largest hotel in Europe, and today it is a Grade II listed building. This means that it is regarded as something of a special building, deemed worthy of preservation. So why am I talking about the Grand Hotel in Scarborough? Well, it's been in the news recently, and as you can probably guess, it wasn't good news. The top two floors of the hotel have been hired in their entirety to house Afghan refugees. There are around 150 Afghans now in residence at the hotel. And let's just say the reviews from other guests have not exactly been glowing. One mustn't complain, however, because that would make you a racist. What else? One review on TripAdvisor was from a woman who told of her experience at the hotel. She said that she waited an hour to check in because the place was so busy. It was mayhem. When she and her partner finally made it to their room, after pushing their way through busy hallways, they were shocked at what greeted them. There was urine on the walls, no quilt on the bed, and Afghan children running in and out of rooms unsupervised. She then decided to go back down to the reception area, having understandably decided against staying there. Now here's what she said. I overheard people talking angrily about the kids and people just stood about. They were refugees and more buses were just parking up. I don't have a problem with this. I just felt we should have been made aware that the hotel would be this hectic. Then we could decide if the noise would be a problem for us. Even though her holiday was entirely ruined, isn't it interesting how she felt the need to say, I don't have a problem with this. Of course she has a problem with this, but she's afraid to make her feelings known lest she be called racist. And everyone knows you can't risk being called a racist. So rather than just tell it like it is, people jump up and down to make sure everyone knows they don't have a problem with this. It's ridiculous when you think about it. It's comical. Anyway, she continued by saying this. I spoke to the man at the desk and asked for a refund and explained why. He then started shouting at me calling me a racist. I am no racist, she continued. I booked the break when the school holidays had ended, so it would be quieter. He flatly refused me a refund, so we left. We went on to pay £150 to get a room for one night, then went home a day early as we were both worn out. As I was at the desk getting insulted, at least three others were demanding a refund for the same reasons. So to summarise, a couple go away for a weekend, pay for a hotel, the hotel is a mess, they ask for a refund, they're called racists, they pay £150 for another hotel and go home a day early having had a miserable time. Despite all of this, they still insist they have no problem with the migrants that caused it all. This is not the sole example. Another couple tried to get a refund through their holiday operator because of all the negative reviews they'd read online. They tried to cancel their £338 booking in advance, but to no avail. They too were called racist by the hotel. One of these guests said the following. Our concern is about safety and leaving things in our room because of what we read about theft and kids running wild. Naturally enough, that was racist. Here's what she said in response to that. By no means are we racist. I've worked with refugees and it is not their fault. Not their fault. Whose fault is it then exactly? This is such an interesting way to describe it. Not their fault. Of course it's their fault. But how 
patronising to say that it isn't. What this person is saying is essentially that many Afghans are simply too uncivilised, too different to us. What we find appalling, they find A-OK. And the irony is, she's right, at least partly. We are dealing here with vastly different cultures. And in Afghans, we're dealing with people who overwhelmingly have zero respect for our culture. If you point out this simple reality, you're a racist. If you complain about this simple reality, you're also a racist. In fact, the only way to avoid being called a racist is to enjoy having urine on your bedroom wall or kids running wild or theft or having your holiday ruined. If you don't enjoy it, you're a racist. Again, it's ridiculous. We're tying ourselves in knots, eating our own tails, chasing ourselves round in circles, aiming only to not be called racist. It's our primary concern. Even when our holiday is ruined, that's what matters. To be fair though, it's understandable. Being called racist is the kiss of death. It terrifies people. People have gone to prison for apparently being racist. It's one of the most powerful words in Western discourse. But of course, it no longer has any real meaning. Now, in the West, if you complain about illegal migration, cultural differences, crime, and if the offender is not white, you'll be a racist. The reality of the illegal immigration, the cultural differences, or the crime are apparently irrelevant. If you're white and you complain about someone who isn't, you're a racist. End of story. But let's be fair on all this, though, because there is racism here. There is actual racial hatred, and it is against the British majority. If an Afghan had complained about another Afghan, would they have been called racist? No, they definitely would not. My guess is that even if a black person complained, they would not be called racist either. It's only white people that are given the label, and that is actual racism. You can't make this stuff up, it would drive you mad. But here's something else that would drive you mad. The cost. It too reflects racism. Anti-white racism. As an aside, hatred of whites isn't even considered racist. That's how racist it is. So let's get on to the cost. Apparently the government is paying £250 to the hotel per room per night. Imagine how much that's adding up to. Then we have the refurb. At the end of the Afghan culturally enriching visit to the Grand Hotel, the government will foot the bill to have the place entirely refurbished. They know they'll have to. That's telling, isn't it? Here's something else that's rather telling. Homelessness in the town of Scarborough has more than doubled since the coronavirus crisis began. There are hundreds of people in this fairly small town who need accommodation. But guess what? The government isn't housing them in grade two listed hotels. There's no money for that. Plenty of money for Afghans, however. Once again, the British are at the bottom of the heap in Britain. Millions of pounds are being spent housing migrants in the UK at the moment, but the thousands of Brits living on the streets must stay there. 13,000 military veterans are living on the street in Britain. No hotel for them. Meanwhile, record numbers of illegal immigrants continue to arrive. A lot of people are tired of this. I'm one of them. The injustice of it is nearly unbelievable. So here's the reality. British people have been abandoned by the British government. They are only required to pay taxes, to foot the bill. That bill is to pay for all and sundry from all over the world to come to Britain 
and take, take, take. It's the truth. And everyone knows it's the truth, racist or not. This can't last. At some point, there will be a backlash. To avoid violence, I sincerely hope that backlash is political. Political change is essential now. A great reset is needed, if you like. Both Labour and the Tories must go and their fate is in our hands. If we don't vote for them, they won't be in power. If we do, they will. And this will just continue. Stop voting for this nonsense. Start voting for your own rights, your freedom, your taxes to be spent wisely. Start voting for your children and your country. To put it simply, start voting for Britain. Thank you for watching. If you would like to stay updated with all of our latest videos, please like the video below and subscribe to our channel. As you probably know, For Britain is shadow banned on most social media. So it's really important to like and share our videos in order to get our message out. Thanks again for helping us to fight back. Thanks again for helping us to bring back Britain.